Most of us have had situations in our lives where we've been diminished or shut down or a similar experience. Now that doesn't feel good. And often in order to avoid the pain of those situations, we start giving away our power to various people in our lives. And we become risk averse and start living smaller and smaller. Now singing in front of a group of people allows us to make a physical connection with the limiting messages that we've picked up along the way and provides a way of releasing the feelings around those messages. And it feels really good. Tell me maybe a story or two about personal transformation that you've seen, um, either your own or some of your students that you know, no names, of course, unless they've given you permission to do that. But. Right. I'll tell you about my own, first of all. Oh, absolutely. I'm in an organization of attorneys uh, in the Houston Bar Association that create a musical comedy every year in mid-June. We do it at the Wortham. And these people are really good. These attorneys are wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> and and uh, in 2008 or nine, I believe it was, my job was to sing a song solo Benny and the Jets, and accompany myself, Elton John style, on the stage, and the piano was moving at first. And so I practiced, I, it was the hardest challenge I've ever had, and I practiced, and it was the week of the show where we move into the Wortham to rehearse, Right. and I went 30 minutes before anybody was to get there, and I looked at the hall, and it was empty, and I looked in the balcony, and I looked in the orchestra section, and I said, I can't do this. Oh. There's been some terrible mistake, <laughs> and I simply cannot do this. It's too big and too ugly. And what I did is I did my process. Oh. I worked through my emotional stuff and my fear and got to a place where I could do it with absolute joy and abandon. Now, that's the key that's right the there. Key. Yeah, absolutely. And practice, right? That's right. Like anything else. That's right. You have to practice, practice, practice. So there is a process that people learn to help them move through that fear. And Absolutely. that's what you teach. I have people that tell me, Tony, this is changing my life. I'm taking risk here, singing in front of people. And all of a sudden, I'm taking more risk in my career, right? in my relationships, mm -hmm. in every other area of my life. So it works. I get it. I get it. I, 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 and that's so important, what you just said, because everything's connected. Absolutely. And people think, oh, I can keep this fear over here and it's, you know, and keep it secret or whatever. And it's not affecting anything else. And that's just not true. That is exactly right. Okay. So the people who come to you may or may not understand that when they come to you, right? Absolutely. Okay. That's right. And probably most of them don't. That's probably, yes, that's right. Uh, they just know something's not working. Right. So what would you say is, um, can you share with me maybe the most interesting transformation story besides your own that you've seen? <clears throat> I've uh, often, uh, a person's, if a person struggles with claiming their own personal power, and we all do at some level. Right. Uh, it shows up in lack of voice support. We sing from down here, and they try to produce all the sound physically right here and muscle up to the high notes. And <clears throat> when a person gets it, when a person all of a sudden feels safe and feels comfortable in taking that kind of risk to sing with their whole body and to access that support, and we do it through a number of exercises, uh, singing exercises that encourages them to claim their space. I belong here. This is my space. That kind of thing. Their energy changes. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, they're absolutely having the time of their life. I had a, a one woman. We have showcases after our, our weekly classes. And this one woman, uh, just she started singing the showcases like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eyes wide open. Deer in the headlights, I call that Absolute, book. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And about her third showcase, she opened up. Finally, it was safe enough for her. And she was just wonderful. And afterwards, she said, Tony, that's the most wonderful night of my life. Oh, 
that's awesome. Well, that's that's what breaking through blockages does. It's right. such a freeing feeling. Right. So is she still singing? I'm sure she is. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. awesome. Well, I know a lot of my friends are into karaoke and all that stuff, and it looks like so much fun, and I just... <laughs> well, I have been known to do it, but that was oh, years ago and after lots of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I would advise you to choose a safe environment. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. So you, you, you talked a little bit about the power involved in this, and, the, and, and I think that's really at the core of what we're talking about is how much are we going to claim our personal power? And this, I think, is a great arena because we, we don't claim our personal power, in my opinion, until we face some of our greatest fears. And I always right. tell people, courage is not about lack of fear. It's about moving through fear. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I think that's an, where you provide an arena. And I mean, I heard it said one time that public speaking, and, and I would think singing too for people who aren't comfortable with it, is the number one fear after death. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. I, and I think actually singing in public is a notch above public speaking. Probably so. <laughs> yeah, probably so. People don't even go there. They don't right. even talk about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. So tell me again, if people want to uh, explore their unique voice, how do they get hold of you? Uh, livingyourvoice.com. They can email me through that website, mm -hmm. and they can call me uh, on my cell phone, 713-826-9814. Great. You know, I just, I just, I knew I was going to love talking to you. I love it, and it's kind of got a little knot in my stomach, too, because, you know, it's not easy to talk about our personal fears. Oh. You know, I, I'm out there. I do a lot of stuff. I'm in the public eye a lot. So it's not necessarily comfortable for me to say, this scares the bejesus out of me. <laughs> you know, just the thought of actually singing in front of people is, is very frightening. Well, I'd say not frightening. It's like I'm just not going there. Uh-huh. We, uh, we have a song in one of my workshops uh, uh, and where we sing, I will be easy on myself, mm. and I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. Interesting. Interesting. That's about safety. That is about safety. And then as we move through our fears, um, all of us is ready to go at a different pace, I would think. Yes. You know? Yes. Interesting. Okay, so let's back up. Uh, I just want to kind of look at this a little bit more because we kind of skimmed over it. You were a full-time attorney. I was. When you had this experience that awakened you. Right. And then, so how did it evolve that you were a full-time attorney? How did, you, how did you shift that so that now you're a part-time attorney and a <laughs> full-time holistic voice coach? Well... I believe that this is this is why I came here. Mm -hmm. I think so. And uh, so I, I, it just so happened that I made the decision, and I was clear about it, and I was clear that I wanted to work part time contract, and the universe just sort of organized itself around this passion of mine. Mm -hmm. I love it when that happens. Yeah. It's yeah. so validating. It's so. It, it, that's when you know. That's when you know. That's exactly <laughs> right. And I have to say, kudos to you for having for for having the courage to step up to that plate when it presented itself. Because I think many times when we are still living with our fears, we get opportunities and we don't take that step because our fears are holding us back, even if we're not consciously aware of that. Uh huh. I encourage my students to never settle. For less than absolutely everything. I love that. In their lives. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Well, I, you know, with my students, I talk about, uh, and this is from the Edgar Casey readings as well, and the truth is the truth regardless of how it comes to us, but I talk about creating your ideal life. Yeah. You know, whatever that is for you. Right. To first know what that is. Right. Or have a general idea, and then be open enough to allow the universe to make it even better. Right. Which I think happened for you, right? It, it really did. Awesome. Yeah. So once again, can you share another story with us? Um, maybe.